First on the agenda is to approve the agenda. Is there any additions to the agenda? I have an executive session that I'd like to add to the agenda. Uh, so we'll be titling that personnel issues and per uh, 1 BSA 313A3. Is there anything else to add to that? I move to accept the uh, yeah. <coughs> agenda as amended. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. I can say that this time. Last time we couldn't <laughs> say all in favor because there was nobody left. <laughs> <laughs> we did do it the first time. All right. And first appointment is the Energy Committee. Is everybody here to hold that plan to be here? Or so this is, this is not about appointing new members. We haven't met any new members yet. Yeah. <laughs> um, this is, I came here today because I've kind of been talking with Therese back and forth and the town plan, as you know, has um, going to be finished. Final draft is coming up. Talking a little slower because I have to take these deep breaths under this mask. <laughs> so the, um, once the, well, Last, last time the town plan was reviewed, there were these goals. Goals and benchmarks. Um, do you all have Appendix B? Yeah, I OK. Um, so these goals are what the Energy Committee is aiming to work towards. And I made these progress charts so that we could check out how we're doing so far as a town. Um, and this is important. A lot of times we consider renewable energy and electrification as part of the um, you know, climate change mitigation process. But this also has the added benefit of keeping dollars in our local economy. You know, we spend millions of dollars as a town on fossil fuels, whether it's heating our homes or putting gas in our cars. So every step we make towards the goals in Appendix B really will be saving our residents' money. And hopefully they'll be paying their taxes and their water bills with this money. Um, so we can start by looking at the first page of these progress charts, solar power capacity. And this relates to energy goal number 1L on page 5 of Appendix B. Um, amount of renewable energy production. And the there's only one benchmark for that, that's in the year 2050, we should be producing around 12,000 megawatt hours of renewable energy in our town. Um, currently, we're producing about 550 kilowatts, that's a much smaller amount, of solar power um, we have about 1,200 kilowatt hours that come from the Bethel Mills Dam. Um, so, you know, we're a little bit short on maybe where we would want to be, but you can see that there's a trend of increasing solar installations, which is exciting. Um, last year, the Bethel Energy Committee co-hosted Solarized Bethel Region with Integrity Energy, and that led to seven homes in Bethel um, adding a solar installation to their house. And 44 kilowatts of added solar power capacity for our town. Now this campaign was regional, so there is some you know, sites in Royalton and Randolph that are you know, not included in Bethel's numbers, but it's still a positive thing. Um, so that's solar power kind of review. Does anyone have any questions so far? I do. Do we get credit towards this in this whole thing? Like the town participates in a solar array, which I don't believe is actually in Bethel. Um, but does the town, for as far as the state meeting our goals for the, do we get credit even if for, even though the solar isn't in our town, but because we participate in it? Yeah, that's a good okay. question. Um, for the purposes of these charts, I pulled this information off of a website called the Vermont Energy Atlas, mm -hmm. which is um, created by the Energy Action Network. So, um, you know, aside from this information, I don't know how the state would even be 
keeping track other than public utility records. Yeah, I remember. Um, and for the purposes of this, that solar installation was not included in this chart because it is in South Wales. Right, that's what I because I, I know there's these goals that were all, that all the state wants and municipalities to meet, and that's why I was like, well, how are they going to know that? I mean, does it count if we're, well, we're participating in this, but that means it's not in our town, so I wasn't really sure. And I wondered the same thing. How would I do Right, and I think that installation should be noted as yeah. something Bethel is doing. Yeah. It probably also won't take into account the off-grid individuals, right? Because the state would have a record if someone has an off-grid home. Um, I, um, the way I understand it, if you install a solar panel on your house, you must have to file some sort of Well, I think if, if thing? your home you is might know more about it than I do. To, to a utility, then then there's registration for that. Um, because now you're inputting units into the system, right? Oh, okay. so but if you're, if you're completely off the grid, which we do have. We know, do have some people We do have quite a bit of homes yeah. that are completely off the grid. I can think of three right off um, the top of my head. So it'd be probably, it, it, my guess is it's not included, but it'd be something that the committee would want to follow up with because you could add that to the towns. Yeah, add that to our solar capacity. Yeah, capacity. but it's probably not going to show that. might not be included okay. in this information. Because, yeah, I was curious how the state would know whether we met these goals or not that they set. So I, I, I was like, that's why I was asking. Like, maybe Nicole knows how to do this. <laughs> yeah. There's also something called energy credits. Yeah. They're worth money. Yeah, right. And Because uh, you want to reduce your carbon footprint, correct? Correct. And the state, I don't know the numbers, but we have a goal in 2050 to be at a certain point. Unfortunately, because they're worth money, some of the bigger producers are selling them to Connecticut and Massachusetts and New York so they can get their carbon footprint written back. It doesn't do a damn thing for us. And it can be very frustrating to see these, you know, the infrastructure we're trying to set up to get, you know, kind of abused by bigger businesses. Um, and for most of the purposes of what the Bethel Energy Committee does is we're really trying to zero in on Bethel Town and just what we can do here. Um, so, aside from that, that great solar comments, um, we can move on to heat pumps, if everyone's ready. So the next page, um, residential and commercial heat pumps, corresponds with the energy goal in Appendix B, number 1H. And according to this goal, we should have 87 new heat pumps installed in Bethel by 2025. And you can see we're a little short. Um, I'm not surprised. Heat pumps are, the, the way I understand them, it's best to have a heat pump and a wood stove and an oil furnace. Um, they're an and sort of equipment. It's dry out. We have heat pumps in our house. And so there is two, yes, we have backup source so that it gets below, you know, below zero. Sometimes they're not as efficient. The other thing is, too, People cannot throw a, a heat pump in a house that's not already, you know, efficient energy-wise. Otherwise, it's, it's just ridiculous. It's not going to work. Our house is extremely airtight, so we built it that way. But, and, and I'm sure Dave can attest that unless their house is already buttoned up and energy efficient, it's not really worth it to, to put it yeah. in so they're not Heat really pumps in the last three years have finally started to get so they work with that energy efficient home. Exactly. Ten years ago, they didn't work in any homes. Yeah. So above, above Florida. Yeah, exactly. No, you're right. I mean, I always work, but yeah, you have to bring a makeup air, there's all that sort of stuff. So it's a process. But get certainly there. getting people to get their homes weather-wise is, is obviously a, a huge step in the right direction. Yeah, and the chart right underneath shows the benchmark for um, percent of homes in Bethel weatherized. Um, and this information comes from, you know, Efficiency Vermont, uh, the State of Vermont uh, Low Income Weatherization Program. So you can see that there's a trend increasing. And, you know, as of 2018, almost 10% of Bethel homes were reported weatherized. And there's a lot of statewide help. Um, last year, the Energy Committee hosted a button-up event at the Arnold Block, and seven homes signed up during those visits, um, during that event. Um, and that was, it was really, um, P 
people had interest in it. When we posted that on Facebook, there was likes all day. It was shared. Not a lot of people showed up for the event, but there's a, a big interest in the button up. It's really well known. So really glad we have the state of Vermont uh, leading the way in that. I have a question. When my understanding is, and this is information we give out quite a bit, is people, um, especially seniors, who are looking for perhaps fuel assistance. Um, it seems like if you sign up for fuel assistance, then someone maybe reaches out to you about doing weatherization on your home. Do you know if that's a true, we've heard that, but I don't know if that's a true statement. Do you know? I don't know if that's true or not, but no. that's, that's a good question. I think it would be, that would be something, I think, if the Energy Committee had to, to promote certainly is for, certainly for seniors, is the fact that if there's a, um, st there's state aid out there available for some people if they qualify, especially seniors for fuel assistance and then trying to get them to with the fuel assistance and with you know efficiency Vermont you know I'm assuming that's who they send yeah, out. That next step, so they're not just getting the money for the fuel that goes out the window. Yeah exactly I think that's kind of fine with the state saying the same thing. So I'm curious about that if there's some of the partnership is there or something. Yeah I would definitely be interested to learn more about those programs as well. There's um there's a lot going yeah. on. <laughs> especially seniors that fixed income don't have the money to, to go replace windows and maybe their home is older, insulation, all those sorts of things. Yeah, and you know, with the, you know, Bethel is the kind of known where low income town, a lot of, I think it's 40% is at or below the Vermont medium, median income. Yeah. Um, and I grew up in one of those homes. I'm still in one of those homes. Um, and. So, you know, you find that things like weatherization projects or um, appliances, you're not going out buying new appliances because you want to. It's because they break. <laughs> it's, it's right on that line that you have to. Um, so weatherization, you know, a lot of people are, are pushing it with their windows until their windows are actually broken. Um, so next year, we're hoping to pull together with the uh, Randolph Energy Committee and the Barnard Energy Committee to do a window dressers uh, campaign. And what that looks like is it's a workshop. And we're, you know, everything's up in the air. It's very tentative. They've modeled this up in Maine. It's been successful in that colder Maine climate. So what it is is a temporary interior storm window insert. Um, if you just think a two by four square, um, on two sides, there's plastic, and then you just pop that into your windowsill, and it helps with heat loss, and it's low cost. That's a great idea. Isn't it great? Yeah, that's a great idea. <laughs> uh, and the window dressers team, they're really on the ball, and they're organized, and they've been um, allowing the Vermont Energy Committees to attend these trainings to kind of learn more about the program, and that's where we're at right now, just kind of learning more and seeing how we can make it fit. Um, when you end up setting that up with you, <clears throat> let us know because you know, we have water sewer bills quarterly. It doesn't go to every resident, but it goes to 300. So it, it's a lot of those are landowner, uh, landlords. So we're happy to, if you guys came up with something, we could copy it, insert it in the water sewer bills that would be to help you promote yeah. it. So just keep that in mind. Uh, just let us know because obviously we only build quarterly, so you'd have to get it the right schedule. But right, keep yeah. it in mind. And I'm in the communication between the energy committee and the town. Um, the past year, I've been chair, I've been focusing on strengthening the communication within the committee with each other. <laughs> so now we're kind of ready to take that next step and start really um, doing some more things town-wide. Yeah, that would be great. Um, and the last goal that we can look at is electric vehicle registrations. And that corresponds to the Vermont State Energy Bowl number 1N on page five. And so this always makes me laugh. Um, the 2025 goal for electric vehicles is 126. <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, so currently we have three hybrid cars in town. <laughs> That's a tough one. And one all electric. As of 2018, there's one all electric, which is great. I'm excited about that. That's a success in my, in my Yeah. 
Um, you know, this it's not the most technology forward place to be. So electric vehicles, it's um, you know bringing these two things together and really finding the right electric vehicles really important. So last year, the Energy Committee hosted a National Drive Electric Week event, a car show, and there was about 100 people who milled about the parking lot throughout the day. Some of them were here for the Ford Festival, but some of them came here for that car show. And that excites me because, you know, downtown Bethel, people came here. About 100 people were just hanging out. Um, and we gave about 40 test rides, so residents and locals just got to sit in the cars and experience an electric vehicle. And events like that really are, um, you know, that's how you just inform people on this technology is one by one, in person. You know, we can put things on Facebook or there's commercials on TV, but it's not really as valuable as having your neighbor say to you, I tried out this car and it actually works. Um, so that, hopefully next year, things will be back on track and we'll be able to make that a, a bigger event. Um, so that is kind of where we are in terms of progress. We can see the trend is very slow and steady. And this is more to give us a grip on the pace. This is not meant to make us all panic that we're not going to reach the goals. Mm -hmm. We are not going to reach the goals. I'm just going to say it now. <laughs> yeah. And I was kind of, you know, thinking where to go from here. You know, um, last year, the Energy Committee, beginning of the year, we made our goals. So that's what we're going to do for the year. So, you know, next year, January, when we do that, I think it would be a good idea to take our goals to you all and kind of say, what do you think? Do you have any input? And align ourselves. So if there's like a, something we want to put in the water bill, we kind of have it on our radar. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. I think the only thing you know, I think some things you can do now, you know, certainly this time of the year are, you know, letting people know about whatever the availability of fuel assistance or what, you know, sign up credits, tax credits as the year's winding down. If people want to buy, you know, if there's rebates this year for um, purchases, you know, sometimes the GMP website, you know, lets people know yeah. that. And that actually, um, here's a new way, an actual solid goal that I was hoping we could make happen. The Bethel Energy Committee is not listed as a town appointed committee on the Bethel Town website. Oh, okay, just send the information to Kelly. Yeah, and so if we get ourselves up there, have the website link. Our Facebook page, I post about four rebates each month. Oh, perfect. So there's just information coming out. Um, yeah. It's a really, it's great because it's a free platform. And, yeah. you know. Just let Kelly know, then remind her what you're doing so that way she can also like it. So that Around. So yeah, just email Kelly. I, I don't know why. Yeah. I'm there. I apologize. And a, a lot of these things I think of um, that the town could help with. It's it's not actually the town. It is Kelly. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. She manages the social media. So just email her and call, and then let her know what you're doing on Facebook, and then that way she can look forward to, to, to like it. That way, it gets on our site too. So right. And yeah. Kelly can see what the she thing does. that um, is going to be starting, but not Vermont is doing Weatherization Wednesday on social media. So oh, that will be great. something I can send to her each Wednesday she can put out. That would be terrific. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's just a short video informational about, uh, you know, a, a little thing that you can do, like doing your windows, like window stripping. And it's um, called Button Up? It's, uh, it's by Button Up Vermont, and it's Weatherization Wednesdays. Nice. Um, and then also kind of the, the other thing we're doing for the end of the year is just uh, recruiting. If, if anyone in this room knows anyone who wants to join. Yeah, we do put something in the tax bills, letting everybody know, you know, it's available. So far I have three, um, so we'll certainly shift them your way. But, um, and the select board didn't say that they, you know, you could have your the two people that are from out of town put in their letters of interest and now um, to the select board and they're open. You know, as long as they make up probably the minority of the board. Then yeah, board and I'm really excited about having some new, yeah. Like, from you know the energy department at the law school, just yeah. having someone that talent 
Um, but we're going to be meeting them later on this month, or at the beginning of next month. So we'll see. We'll see if they show up to the meeting. We'll yeah. see how it goes. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, we have been trying to get people volunteers. So. And it's just a small town. It's the way it goes. Like I'm, I'm really happy. With it. Thank you. Yeah, we're trying. So that's great. And just you know, having people on there for a few years. Like uh, we've all been on there for almost two years now. So that's. That's a long time, and that's really, that's something in itself. Um, are we allowed to meet in person now? Can we meet at the yes. town office? Uh, the town office might be tricky, depending on how many of you, but you can certainly meet here. Okay. Either upstairs or downstairs. As long as, it uh, depends on the night, and then uh, you have to be the only one in the building, and we're just saying, you know, stay, try to stay six feet apart, um, wear masks in and out, that sort of thing. You have windows open, so you have, you know, but certainly we've been having a lot of people meet here because we can do it easier. Yeah. So just reach out to Kelly. I'm not sure what night you normally meet. So um, just reach out to Kelly and Great. Yeah. Pick up key and you can certainly meet, you know, up here. It gives you more room and the tables are set up and kind of a nice thing. Yeah, it's pretty small in that. Time. I will tell you that if you try to do Zoom and meet here, that's trick. <laughs> the acoustics are horrible. Oh, we're, we're all just so done with Zoom. Yeah. <laughs> Great, cool. Um, well, that's that's the update. Oh, Progress the Conservation report. Commission is meeting with our director of science. Are they meeting at Peabine? I went to one of their meetings, so you can also, you know, it's nice you can meet outside too. So we should do that anyway. Yeah, it's nice out. Yeah, it was a nice night. We had a good night. There. You can meet over at the band show. Yeah, you can meet at the band show. You know, so outdoors leads kind of move on it. Yeah, right. Cool. So certainly, but if you want a key to this place, uh, just get a hold of Kelly and the seat. Call her in advance to make sure there's nobody else here at that. Time. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll just like next time with Kelly a bit. Yeah. Um, over this next week. I appreciate everybody listening and your interest. And, you know, if there's anything you can do, I don't expect you to run out and buy an electric vehicle. Mm -hmm. But, you know, take a test drive. That sounds good. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that's that's nice. That means the recreation that we need. Yeah, we should meet under the pavilion at the hall, down at the park. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, you too. Thank you. 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 Thank might get to the point where on certain committees that you know that are struggling for numbers that maybe you know like the energy committee would be a good example of maybe instead of just being a town committee maybe it's a regional committee or you know encompasses three or four towns or something because um, some of these committees are really really right now. have got a pretty good amount of people on there yeah but maybe like Barner yeah, yeah like I'm just saying might have more input on what. Yeah. Right. Plus some of these, like, you know, you know, it's not just a town goal, it's usually regional goals and you know. So it's all the goals be more realistic though. Well these are state funding. So we must get credit for our per portion of the transfer station, right? Where she was talking. I would assume so. I, should. I mean although we don't get uh, I don't know where that energy goes. So that would be only if I'm not sh I guess I'd have to ask her. I don't, I'm mean, assuming we get, because we own a large portion of it. I'll have to ask Nicole. I'll make a note to let her know. I'd like to know where that energy credits went. I don't know. Yeah. I know where they went from this day I got here. Yeah, yeah, we don't know as well as I think that was part of the contract that we looked at. Didn't it talk about where the energy credits were going to be sold? I don't know. Yeah, I hope it's going to be kept local. Yeah, yeah. A lot of dark seeing has, but I know we talked about that. Right. So I'll open it up to public comment or inquiry if there's anything that's not on the agenda tonight that anybody has. Big crowd tonight. No. No good? I think you'd have a chance. <laughs> yeah. Like <laughs> <laughs> Alright, turn over uh, to the Recreation Facilities Grant Application for Swing Set Work. 
Yeah, so it wasn't in your packet because she was still working on the grant. So it's the Department of Buildings and General Services. I gave you the information last time, but um, mm -hmm. we ended up not being able to do trails because Thatcher is uh, working and the teacher going to work on another bigger grant for trails. So what this is, this is a one-to-one -one match, and what we um, are doing the application for is that the money will be used to prepare the site where the swing set is going to go. So the swing set we took down because of the skate park, so we're going to relocate that. We also, as part of the master plan, need to relocate the monkey bar, so we figured we'd do it all at the same time. So it's also going to be used to replace the swing set legs and the swings. Um, she's got some prices from Capital Steel and um, also the wood chips to go into the structure because they don't give those wood chips away. Um, so the project, total project, is just over $12,000. So the grant would be $6,186.27 if we get it and then the town has to come up with that. Uh, there's $492 in the swing set donation fund. So the other $5,900 we're either going to need to take out of the rec facility improvement fund or out of the recreation budget. So we're going to kind of wait and see where we're at in both. So hopefully we can take some out of one. And, because obviously going to do trails, there's a trail match there for that grant of some sort. So I don't want to, you know, we obviously didn't open the pool, so we have some money there. Um, but it'd be good to get it get this done and to get everything moved and deal with the drainage issue so there's not ponding underneath the swings, underneath the monkey bars, which deteriorates our chips faster. So because you have to, for all the rest of us who used to swing out and jump off, no more. You have to have now a fall zone. So you have to be way out there there so nobody gets hurt. But you don't have to have a seat belt. I know. Well, that's <laughs> Oh, okay. Where is that? Where is it? Where is it? 
Okay. Okay, good. I'll have She her. might use it on the road, I don't know. Going up by the solar panels. I don't know what she did to it. I'll have D3 speak to Jen about it and find out because I know we, it used to be peace on. Yeah. And that told you can't use that anymore. And the rubber would be forgiving, it would give. Yeah, and, and I know rubber was one of them. And, and I remember, I think she was like her, is we hear about the town. They looked, anyways, and it was actually hard to find. Yeah. And um, I don't know if there's any new toxic thing I have to ask each tree because all oh, they add stuff and take it away. One of the things, one of the reasons you don't really want to understand is honestly neighborhood cats. Mm -hmm. um, so that becomes an issue. Yeah. And, <laughs> but that's great. That I'll, I'll let her know. Thank you. Yeah. I will have Dietrich get a hold of her. Yeah, because we used to have a sandbox up there. Yeah. We had oh, I bet that was. That was, was we, had to take, we had to take the sandbox out. Yeah. I've got a hell of a hard track. We catch them for <laughs> Probably a big lunch. So, um, so you just need a motion yeah. to approve the uh, grant application? Yes. Yeah. So moved. Second. All in favor? All right. Aye. Aye. And we have Mr. Adams' resignation for overseeing this shooting at the Brad Pitt. So um, we talked about it a little bit before, but I wanted you to see his actual letter. And I met with um, Mr. Adams, and what he does, you can see everything that he does. It's really amazing. Um, and he's been such a great steward. And I have talked to a few people. I asked Kelly to go through <clears throat> excuse me, the 911 map to see kind of anybody in the area. When I met with the um, Romeos that day, I asked them if they knew of anybody who might be interested in, in taking over the facility. Um, and so far, we haven't had any takers. And it you know, needs to be someone who certainly has had NRA, who is not yours, and who's not afraid of, of guns, and who could certainly you know, deal with people. but. So if you guys have a recommendation or can think of anybody, um, you know, please let us know. Dick certainly is um, in his 80s, and he was thinking somebody maybe recently retired would be great. Um, there are a couple people that were there at the time, and I spoke to them. I believe they're siblings, and they weren't really interested. But I may write to them, and write to them, and ask them if they would consider. Since there's two of them, maybe they could trade off. Um, but. I don't know what we're going to do come the end of the month. The only thing I can think of is, unfortunately, is if we put up a sign and said we have to close it until we can get a volunteer to, I mean, that would certainly start. Oh, right you know, at the end of the month. People so being a little grumpy, Chris. Do you have a side? Do you have a side? Yeah, I'll move down. I'll move down. I'll move down. But, um, so, you know, that's my only thought is at the end of the month, if we have to, I know it'll start a controversy, but that might be what it's going to take to get somebody to step up. He has been such an amazing steward, and if there was a couple people to do it, um, but you know he's going to be done end of the month, and I, I've got nobody. So maybe I'll just put a sign up and tell people that if we don't find someone to take it over, we may have to close, and if they're interested, they could you know call the town office. The good thing about Dick was he was close enough to be here. So Exactly. And that's one of the things I had to probably look at was who lived nearby that could hear it. Because he said that a lot of times he would he hear him and he would get in his car and come down and you know, so it's somebody that hasn't working. Um, so we had, we thought about that. Or even if it's somebody that doesn't look close, at least if they're willing to give out their name and be willing to go and, and check the place out every day so that someone can call them. But maybe we will just put a sign up down there. And, and just tell them, look, you know, we don't want to close it, but unless someone steps up to, I mean, I hate to do that, but if it's the only way I'm going to get somebody. Well, yeah. I'm not comfortable with not being supervised down there because. Yeah. I mean, Doug Mark was recently retired. He didn't show up tonight, so we could volunteer him, right? Who? Doug Marshall. I'm, I'm oh, sorry. there you go. That's right. Yeah. But yeah. Really here for yeah, so yeah. that's, so are you, do you want me to put a sign up down there? Just letting people know that. I'm just trying to advertise it somehow. We have. Good. I mean, that's, we're, you know, that's, that's like, well. The only way you really go out of it is, like you're saying, put a sign down there. Yeah. Asking people to. 
Well, I think if we put the sign there, we're going to find the people we want. No offense, or no pun intended, but the target audience is there, right? People who actually use it. And um, I mean, obviously, we didn't, well, we didn't mail it for other volunteers, but I have Kelly put out something on Facebook. I was trying to make sure we found you know, the right individual and, and let Mr. Adams have a say and meet them. So we kind of tried to do this on the side by talking to a bunch of people and asking them if they're interested. And, Tried that approach, um, but because um, an honor system didn't work out. Yeah. So, but we, I mean, we certainly contacted several people and contacted people to contact people. So I'll talk to Kelly. We'll put out some, call some folks. So that Paul. Oh, Paul Valley. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Paul Feeney. Uh, he works. He's, yeah. It's not, and he's not interested. But they had a neighbor who they thought might be, but that gentleman is busy now. But. Um, so what we'll do is we'll put, we'll reach out to who we have, the name, some of the other people again, Facebook, and we'll put a sign up down there letting people know that we're looking for someone.
these numbers don't represent the speed on the they, they're coming into the curve. If you would have put it at Bicentennial Lane or yeah. at, right. uh, Paula Beals, yeah. uh, somewhere around there. Well, they tried it. My guess is she's trying to get in before Geico. That way yeah. they could target all the offshoots. They, they slow down coming to the curve. Because it's not just speed, but they're also trying to get um, traffic flow yeah. volumes, too. So if you'd, they put it. You'd still get that up there. Where they put it down below, you're going to catch everybody. If yeah, you put it up on Bicentennial, you'll lose. You know, Geico. 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 and Geico. Yeah, but I, I think, think people yeah. Were there, but well, they don't live in Bethel, so yeah. I mean, they, I think just, that was part of it was that. The other thing is they did have it in a different location at first. It was there for a day before somebody well, it ran over it a on purpose, and so we had to mm -hmm. get it. I thought what was interesting is that the, mm -hmm. the volume was almost identical. Like, both roads. The, well, I would have thought that. The, the speed I had was quite reasonable because yeah. if you're over 25 you're pounding the hell out of your car on that. I just thought that both Christian Hill and um, Sand Hill that the, the average daily volumes is 372 versus 376. Well, I work on Sand Hill almost every week and like today I was watching the traffic going through there and there's no way it's 25 miles an hour. I'm getting puzzled right now through and the increased traffic, you know, through the downtown. Well, I think it too, it depends on, you know, what time of day you are. And if you're standing yep. still, it's, yep. you know, certainly. But there was higher, because I know um, Stan Patron actually called me. He said, Trace, there's no way that there's that many people coming up and down. And for example, let me see, and we were talking about it. I said, well, let me tell you the day and time. So I went through it with him mm. and said, look, you know, when you look at um, Sand Hill, we had, Times and we were talking. I was speaking with him about it. I said, you know, when you think about the end of the day, um, at certain key times of the day, how many people are, are coming by? And so once I talked to him about a specific date and how many cars, I said northbound, southbound. He was like, okay, well that makes more sense. So, but if anyone wants to see all the data, there's pages of it. Also depends on how busy the highway department is for that period of time. With how many times they're going. A lot of trips, they're back and forth a lot. You know. Yeah. That's, so that's part of it. It depends how many times Dave and Mom were driving backwards and forwards over the one on the side. Just so they get the extra attention. Yeah. yeah. So, you know. That's good. That's good. That's good. So, um, anyway, so it doesn't, I mean, it's didn't really, uh, you know, in some ways I was hoping it would be a clear, you know, answer as to where, what goes when, but. What work we can win, but um, I guess it didn't really do that for me. But right. gave you some information. <clears throat> we'll pair it with the capital growth plan. Any other questions or discussion in regards to the study information? Okay. I wonder what the bond of tra traffic was on Cemetery Lane. Now. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> well, the ones that went on, we don't know where they went. They disappeared. They never made it down. <laughs> yeah, that's Google Maps. That's so. I don't know it's still there. It's yeah. still there. Oh, it's yeah. not passing. Yeah. <laughs> like I said, Google Maps says it's here. It, someone's GPS will take them down that time. <laughs> we'll, we'll have uh, some mass shoes person stuck in the cemetery. <laughs> uh, and we have the Rock State Police Dispatching Services, so it looks like the state is rolling out some proposed fees. And this is, I, I should have been more specific, I apologize, this is only for the fire department. The constable does not have to pay for dispatching fees. This has been around for years, and I'm not kidding you, years, they've been talking about charging for dispatching. Um, and so we heard about it, uh, Dave and Gary, myself, it had come up and again, and we're like, yeah, well, you know, they, they keep saying it. Well, I guess because of the state and COVID and their budget, they finally decided, okay, yeah, you know what, we're really gonna do this. So I gave you, it's obviously a much larger spreadsheet to the state, and this is what they're doing, is they're currently basing it on 2018 call volume. And as I mentioned to you, I think in the report, 
it says that um, their plan is to incrementally raise us to 100% of the 4,600 over four years. And that percentage would still be based on 2018 call volume. Um, and then I had spoke in the email with this gentleman, Captain Lance Burnham, and he's saying, um, after four years, the commissioner may opt to change the billing strategy based on more current numbers. Well, he probably would. And for us, it could go down. I mean, we just don't know. Sometimes we have more calls than others, so. Now, so. Is, this, is this for Oscar or just for the fire department? This is just for the fire department. Fire. Oscar, they're not charging us for. But in 2018, we had 87 calls. And sometimes the call volume is less and sometimes it's more. So, but we had been, like I said, they've been talking about this for years. And the state carried the burden financially. Some towns already paid and dispatch. We paid the town I came from, we already paid Shelburne. We had we paid someone to dispatch. Um, so that's obviously not the case here. So it's the reason I gave it to you was to just let you know what's happening. Would be obviously that's something that we're gonna have to budget for. Um, yeah but if, if, if we use them for for the police work, that's gonna be a lot more money, right? No, they're not currently charging us for okay. for that. And I emailed them and said, you know, you're not including the constable when I saw that it was it was nothing and they're currently not charging for that. The other thing is too, once we if, if um, we end up contracting out maybe with the BSP or somebody else, um, you know, probably that charge for if it, if they have to pay it would be just part of their fee. Right. But currently this is just for the fire department. That hurts everybody. So, so I guess what kind of takes me back on this a few things. One, you know, I would like to see some sort of more data than just we're going to bill you on a 2018 call debt. I mean, it'd be nice to know like what the five-year history is of our call volume. You know, is 87 calls is that the highest year? Is it the lowest year? You know, yeah, the yeah. average year. I'm not sure. It and, and then, is there any? You know, if these are calls to specific you know, fire-related emergencies, is this something that the town has to burden, or can can any of that cost be passed on to the end user? Well, I would say probably not. I mean, I mean it shouldn't be up to the town of to have to, well, one, the state of Vermont shouldn't be charging the town for state police enforcement again with, because we're paying taxes for that. Well, they're know? not charging us for well, state police, they're only charging us for dispatch. I'm just charging for a dispatch first. Yeah, they're right. only charging us for dispatch. That uh, call today for the end, end of Christian Hill, that's actually a Royalton. Right, so. So, we, we, we got to call that for a Royalton call. Right. And, 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 and probably, um, they, I'm assuming that they were called for um, mutual aid. But, you no, know, Mr. Bethel was the only fire department there. Yeah, they they called mutual aid when the fire department comes to Max. Well, I don't know. If Royalton got called and maybe they didn't have enough people, I don't like it. I'm just saying, the other person who lives in Southwell. Yeah, no, I get that. I'm saying, I don't know how the call originated. I, mean, I don't know. I that don't was know. a call out for the, for the fire department. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and no, I mean, part of the responsibility of municipality is to provide fire service, you know, to the residents. So right. I think the only person you could probably pass a call off to as a dispatcher charge is when we have commercial accidents, we actually bill them right. for, um, you know, fire truck is that we could add dispatching to that charge, but that's only if it's a commercial vehicle accident we bill for. Otherwise, the residential, you know, all of us who have just car insurance on their personal vehicles don't have coverage for that. We've tried that before. See, by now, by calling 911, that's that's a dispatch call to our fire department. Instead mm -hmm. of what we used to do was call fire department. Right, exactly. And we would have paid someone to answer those calls. And now it's, you know, some town, so we don't have, we don't self-dispatch, we don't have the staff to self-dispatch. And um, so, like I said, this is, it's something that's been on, talked about for years. And on, no, um, I mean, as citizens in town, we need to start pushing back against the well, state they all did. these crazy fees are coming down. And this is just another example of more stuff get passed locally and yeah. you know, just tax, I mean, call it what it is, I mean, it's a tax mm -hmm. and at the end of the day and, and then not to provide us with the information on that. I mean, well, I gave you just this one spreadsheet. But like the average cost per call? 
Do yeah. you know what each call costs? Or? Yeah, this is them. This they came. I can give you more numbers that yeah. they gave us. The other thing is too, I should say, we have pushback on this. Um, Dave Algegetti, Gary Kugler was very incensed by this, so they've written letters, they've attended meetings, and well, called. Well, we want to bring you know Mr. McCormick and the other groups yeah. in here to say. I mean, this is just another example. You know, this is a state police example, but we have so many of these that happen a year, they get passed down to the locals from the state government. And mm -hmm. I mean, at some point, you know, the, we're going to run dry and not have any more to give. Yeah. So you know, I can provide you with the more information. I just gave you Bethel's section of it. At this point, you're looking at, you know, you have to raise, you know, your fire department budget's going to go up yeah. four or $5,000. It is. Yeah, Overnight, you know. yeah, it's going to go up uh, 1100 bucks in year one and then 2000 But I'll certainly email Dick McCormick about it, but I will um, provide you with a, it was obviously a much larger spreadsheet. I just wanted you to see what their section was. And um, and so obviously he says they're well aware of our budgetary constraints. Right <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like composting and everything else. Yeah. Pass it in. I mean, it, it's good to do it, but it costs us money to do it, you know. So I can give you some more information in another year of future packets about this, but I just wanted you to be aware of it. It was coming, but yeah, Gary, Dave, they've attended meetings, they've pushed back, and Dave said the same thing that I did, that it's been around and they've talked about it, threatened it. When they first did, we were kind of like, yeah, yeah, they've been saying that for years, but I guess but the money's tight. Yeah, because so, they refused to balance the budget in yeah. the and they passed it down. Exactly. And it's going to be worse some next year. Unfunded mandates. So I mean, look at all the money that's going out here right now with COVID really the stuff that we're going to be paying on soon. Yep. Not going to be able to afford it all. Yep. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah. 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 We can just write a check out of the um, solid waste. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we're ready to check out there. Well, <laughs> then I'll let the research out for our giving room. But it doesn't have enough money in there. That's right. All right. Uh, class board room committee appointments. So there's Carl Russell, Derek, Chris Bors, Alex. Um, that are not currently on, right? Right. The only one. New appointments. Yes. The only one currently on uh, Tim Mills and Derek Wright are the only ones on. That are left. That were left from the there original was committee. Three. Five. Right? But they Kelly reached out them and they didn't have any. Four. Like, I thought there were five. Yeah, they didn't continue. So these. I what? Alex was there already one, but maybe not. I don't have. Them, I looked. I don't have them on the list. Mm -hmm. okay, um, And the other people weren't interested. So we did meet um, last Wednesday, which is great. They're meeting again this Wednesday to get themselves organized. I provided them with information about ancient roads. Um, I gave Matt with Carl today to give them some maps. Um, the mission statement from that was at the original committees. Also, um, some minutes from 2007 where they talked about criteria for roads. So they're getting organized. Um, I did not ask them all for letters mentioned. They all showed up. And you know what? As hard as we're having volunteers, if, um, and they're all willing to do it, and all were very interested in it. So I'm, I'm surprised Carla was one of the letter. I know. Well, I, didn't, I, I we didn't even talk about it, frankly. I it's just, um, <laughs> and Carl actually agreed. Uh, Derek Wright asked him if he'd be the chair, and he agreed. So, um, and certainly, you know, we know all the players. Need a motion to approve those four? So, yeah, we'll point them to the class board work committees. You have all the names listed. Yeah, it's in that. It's and in that. Carl Russell, Derek Altergetti, Chris Fours, and Alex Reister. Yep. Okay. Are you going to do one motion with everybody, or are you going to yeah. do a separate motion for you? One with everybody. Okay. Okay, it's been moved. Second. Seconded. Hey, Lindley. All in favor? Aye. I'm sorry, who did the motion? Mo. Mo, okay, thank you. Good long time coming. She had most long to the shooting range. Yeah, I know, really.
Now, manager's report. So one of the things um, I picked in the report was about uh, that I attended the Conservation Commission and um, Dietrich and Thatcher are going to join going to a future Conservation Commission uh, to pull their efforts on trail writing because the Conservation Commission is working on Quimby Forest, which is at the end of Ringe, which would tie in nicely if they get the trails behind the school done. It would also be able to take people across to the recreation property, whereas if they went from there onto Sand Hill, they could go up and pick up woodland and go that way. So it'd be nice to kind of tie those things together. So um, it's nice to have all the committees working together. The Conservation Commission is great. They're very busy. Um, then, um, as I said, the rest of it was so tax bills and water bills were issued last week. I know there's been some complaints about from people that tax bills and water bills are due. Well, you could pay your tax bill now and your water bill next month or whatever you want to do, but obviously we were forced to do that because the state and the Homestead tax declaration, that's why tax bills and water bills came out at the same time. Um, we did, as I said, and, and um, Ellie showed you obviously, you probably all got the insert that was in your tax bill. It was on purple paper to let you know about the committees and so far, we've had three people, um, one person interested in the Conservation Commission, one person interested in the DRB, and another person interested in the Planning Commission, which is great because I was reaching out to Rick Benson today and said, you know, we may not have a choice but to put the PC and the DRB back to one committee like it was before because we can't have one person on the committee. So um, he and I chatted, you know, went back and forth a little bit about that, and he and I will talk about that again. So hopefully, um, there was one other person that had attended a meeting a few months ago. Kelly got his, I reminded her of that, she went back in minutes, and she's going to reach out to him to see if she can get him interested um, in the planning commission. Because the next step after the public hearing, which is on the 16th of this uh, next month, once the PC hands over the town plan to the select board, the planning commission is going to sit down and work with the DRB anyways to update zoning regulations. Um, myself, Kelly, because we enforce them and there's some stuff there that needs to get straightened out. So working on that, to see how that goes, Harmony Electric was successful in upgrading our electrical service from a 60 amp to 100 amp service. We've got about 100 boxes of stuff shredded and out of the basement, so we're making progress there. Um, which brings me to my question about, I just know, yeah, is the segue into that, is there some pictures of some things that we have in the basement, some old single pane windows, um, there's some old, I don't pass these around, some old globes um, that might have been on some street lights at a time. I know Dietri wanted these to put in her garden to put solar lanterns in. I don't know who wants the windows. There's an old, um, it's painted on, but somebody might want it. Um, an old milk, you know, milk, milk, okay, maybe somebody could refurbish it. There's also some sort of a red sled, either it was part of a Christmas thing, or maybe it was a Boy Scout thing for, um, uh, you know, like the idea rod, that type of thing. I don't know, but the Boy Scout person already came in and took everything that they wanted. So I'll circulate these photos, but basically I'm looking for permission from the select board to either give this away. Um, Does anybody have any? Nobody shared them. Do you want to see them? Sure. So as long as I'm not sure if I can either give them away, there's also some pulleys I showed um, Carl Russell today. It looks like they were old handcrafted. They're not pictures there, but he told me to, I'm going to reach out to the historical society right. because that might be something that, that they're actually interested in keeping because he said, you know, they look like they were handcrafted and um, maybe the historical society would want them. I'm assuming it was maybe something to do with the curtains, like a, a balance. I'm not really sure. But basically, we took this stuff hoed out and I didn't want to give anything to an employee before, obviously, before the select board looked at it. Well, first come, first serve. That's mm -hmm. what I'm thinking. Um, Does anybody have it? We've already them? gotten rid of all the chairs and, and all that stuff. Um, I'm not surprised. If there's anything the chairs, left, left, you can always advertise it on your Facebook page. Yeah, yeah, we could. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to see that. I need more stuff. So, well, not, yeah, I know. We have something which 
So as long as everybody's okay with me, first come, first serve, and maybe a donation. The only question I had on the budget status report was mm -hmm. just uh, everything looked good overall, but I had a question. So it looks like the health insurance is slightly higher than what we had anticipated? I don't think so. Um, if I... Where in particular? Or, or maybe it's just how the check rubber ran in or... Well, um, we're, um, we're, so, it seemed like all of them were well, higher than... You might have had a payment, a quarterly payment or something. I'll have to well, yeah. we So like under the municipal offices right now we're at 14%. Okay, we pay monthly. So it could have either I paid paid up front. Right. Public works is 15%. Right. Yeah, and, and public works is off a little bit because we... Um, actually, no, it wouldn't be. Never mind, I fixed that. Um, so I'll have to look. But I, said, no, well, we did. We had a rate increase. We had a rate increase in January of 11.6%. Yeah. But it wouldn't have been more than I budgeted, so I'll have right. to take No, that was the only question. Yeah. Yeah. Well, shouldn't we be at about 16%? percent we have got about two months? Well, right now, we should, it's like 8% a month, so right now we should be at like 16. And this is current. This was period Well, two. we're not quite the end you, pay, you, pay, you don't pay any month. You pay. Right. right. So, in this I'm looking at, it says current year period two. So um, I thought I'd run this for the end of the month, so I must have ran it for that time. So it would be halfway through August. Right. So, so it's like, yeah, but I'll just double check. Yeah, I'm gonna look. No, that was only a question. Well, no, I learned that. So uh, look at loss. But yes, we did receive an increase of 11.6 percent. I I got one I didn't even understand. The water department. Mm-hmm. Your regular salary is seven hundred and thirty dollars. How do you get twenty five hundred dollars overtime? Well, because um, uh, Richard, sorry, brain cramp. Richard's salary gets paid for. He gets paid out of public works, parks, and water. So between those, he works his um, he works eighty hours a week, and then he also works every Saturday. Eighty hours every two. Weeks. Every eighty hours every two weeks. And then he also works every Saturday and Sunday. And because of the road project, he's had some overtime. So any overtime he works gets charged through the water or public works to the appropriate spot. So it's possible. And only 15% of his sal 15 or 18% of his salary even gets charged to the water. So obviously he incurs overtime when he goes over 80 hours. And he goes over every two weeks because he works every Saturday and Sunday. And Tim is on salary, so he doesn't get overtime. I just. I know it's a funky thing, but that's it's why. It's a number that uh, I saw that didn't look right. Yeah, and also too because of the project, there was a couple days where he was helping with the reservoir and the valves and some things like that, so he had some overtime. But um, that's why um, water department always has an overtime line because you have to pay someone to work seven days a week. Because we have to check, check the pumps and tests every every day. Does that answer your question? Anything else in regards to the town manager report? I also should say with the finances too, is Paul, um, I had messaged Kelly today and then I, I guess I thought I had given you June, but I hadn't. And now I've started making journal entries, so I'm like halfway through. So if I give you June now, it's going to go funky. So I should have it for your next packet to have a better idea of where we stood at the end of the year. Okay. Um, I have two questions. Sure. I don't even know, I know where to put them. Okay. One of them is the, uh, obviously the boys aren't going to get the water job done this year. Right. So from what I've been reading on the work scheduling, we are all done up through, through Livery Stable Road. Is that correct? I honestly, I'm, I, I'm, I feel like they had a little more to do on livery. Pretty close. Then. But they're pretty close, yeah. And then we'll be done. And they're actually, they had talked about paving this week, but I actually think it would okay, be next week. That was my question. Let's get some of that more paved. Yeah, I think I mean, it would be next week. Cars are a mess. The streets are a mess. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, yep. that stuff that goes down, it, it doesn't make a lot of dust, but it's a part of the dust. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then we all know how to drive. But yeah, they're actually, they, last conversation that I had on Friday, 
with Amy was they were talking about paving this week, but there's still some stuff on the punch list to be done, so we actually think they'll end up paving next week. And then, of course, they are working. Um, we're going to just one lane of traffic, so there's no parking, so we're getting up to almost to Arnold Block. And what they're going to do is um, removing the rope, you know, the pavement and any concrete, then they're going to lay the main water line, then they're going to lay all the back and do all the service lines. And well, I'm seeing that, like they're done on delivery. Yeah. That's a long way. It is. Like, you know, dusty and rough road. Exactly. Yeah, so hopefully within the next two weeks or less, you'll see. I think we also talked about, Teresa and I talked about having Amy come in and visit us. It'll, if not, the next board meeting, the one after that. Yeah. Maybe. To kind of update us on yeah. the schedule. And yeah, because we know they're not going to make it, which I've been saying, you know, been telling you guys we're not going to make it. Obviously, Tejo's contract will stay the same. Annie's may not, but we're waiting to figure that out because um, we're waiting for some information that A and E needs from Tatro about the late start due to COVID, different things. Obviously, the select board we didn't um, budget that hundred and some thousand for stormwater, but we have to my um, have managed to get livery stable done. We've done some other stormwater work with that fifteen thousand and engineering that we were going to engineer these spots. We've actually been able to get some work done. So we have um, pumped, we have, you know, uh, pumped out all the storm drains, but we've had a couple of things lined. We've had some new things installed. We actually installed new on livery stable. So, we're, you know, which is nice because then we don't look like a bunch of buffoons later, like in two years when we go to cut the pavement, we actually managed to get that done in here. So we'll have a better idea at the end of September what um, the project, you know, what we're going to handle one better then because I'm hoping that when they when they get done, there'll be no hurt in town. Right. It'll be paid for the winter. Yes, oh, yeah. Like that's, yeah, 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 yeah that it will be paid for the winter. And there, so that's the plan right now. Um, Greg Tatro himself was down, has been down, and he is hopefully in the next couple of weeks we're going to see three to five more people joining the cruise. So they'll be able to pick up a little more speed here. And um, obviously our main priority, as we have said all along, Tim and I have been saying, is we need them to, we really want them to get this far. We want them to get off from that little, that piece of Main Street and up to here at least. So once we have more information, we'll let you know that. Obviously we've been working with city parks of the state and all that. She's well aware of the situation and what we're doing. And uh, so. The other question I didn't want to bring up either was the skate park. Yeah. I'm a little disappointed that that has sat there for two months. Well, he was here. Uh, he poured something when we were on vacation. Yeah. He poured yeah. the middle piece, and we have to keep water on it for 10 days, and then he'll be back because he had to let it cure. It's been all summer, and there'd be mm -hmm. no use of it. For sure. Well, it's good, actually, because we couldn't have use of it because of COVID. So he came in, and he, um, we had, because we have signs over there now. So, and, so he's kind of fit us in for this project, and we have to obviously he has to let things secure in between. I've never seen that two months. Yeah, and I did bring something. You need to put on that big bridge to stay to get traffic going. Yeah, and I did bring in um, someone to look at the work and to make sure, since I wasn't from this contractor, and he said the work is really good. He said it's top notch. He said that's hard work to do. But he was, he did pour out the middle piece while you're on vacation, and we've got water on it for 10 days, and, um, and then he'll be back. So it'll be buttoned up. I think he was hoping for the end of August, but it'll be buttoned up in the next week or so. So, so that will be good. And while we're over there, at the same time, um, we have uh, gone around all the inside of the pavilion has been tightened, all the bolts have been done. Um, flooring is going to get laid in the office in the spring. Um, it is currently the outside of it has been washed, the building, and it's going to be sprayed um, so that, that all that cedar will be sealed. So that's going to happen here too. So we'll have that maintained. Hopefully have a plumber in there at the end of this week and the next. It looks like the water problem in the bathroom, maybe just because the shower and the pipe are unseated. So that's why water's coming out. So Dietrich's, um has reached out to someone and they're going to be hopefully meeting up with her this week or next to figure out if that is the issue of why the bathroom is flooding. So hopefully it's just a simpler fix and not something bigger. Anything else? Oh, and I 
think too before the next meeting, um, our P9 project may be done. It looks like the pulled out of there. Yeah, he wasn't quite done done, but he's also looking to do the painting because we put in a new culvert. And it looks like we did with uh, going back and forth with FEMA. It looks like we may have secured a little bit more money, um, some mitigation money to cover. Some so of what's that. the finish of that going to look like? Is it going to take the barriers, the barriers out? Of um, there's going to be. Um, Guardrail, so I don't think that's been installed yet. The guardrail, and then just over that is going to be grass. Um, it, the, there's a sign about work on North Road, Royalton Hill. Yes, the yep, the road crew is going to be that road is going to be closed for uh, a few days. I think we're closing it basically for the week. There's two electronic signs out there. There's a there's a stormwater drain that has. Um, Failed and there's a there's a sinkhole there, so we're going to be digging that a portion of that up and replacing it with new SVR. And so that road's closed. You'll have to detour using Cleveland Brook or Grant Street. Okay, so I live off of Royalton Hill, so I would I would. Grant Street. All right, so oh, I have to go out Grant Street. Well, I'm the quickest way to get to your place. Okay. Yeah. And, and to get out, I go Ground Street and then at 107. Okay. Because the, the whole road was North Road? Oh, no. Wait. Oh, okay. Just, just the bottom yeah, there's section. A sign, like yeah, there's a sign on the Barnard side, too, obviously, mm -hmm. down there. So they're doing the same thing. That yeah. way it's just, it's just a dangerous intersection. Yeah. Um, as we yeah, know, there was. Very, you know, very, <coughs> yeah. It's very dangerous. That's how that log may go. Yes, exactly. So that's kind of the sign. Yeah. Okay. So how far on the north road are they going? Just at the beginning there? I don't know. They're chasing it. So honestly, just, I'm not exactly sure how far they go. They're not going to the intersection 107. They're starting no, no, past no, Tessie's. No, just from like Cleveland intersection. Uh, just about Greenhurst where that kind of. Yeah, yeah there's yeah, a house right, there, and I think it's Cleveland. And below, and below where Roland Hill comes in. Right. Right. Yeah, so it's basically okay, right so the house. The house next to Tessie's and up. Yeah, so the uh, Rebbe and, and Judge mm -hmm. Roberts. Mm -hmm. I didn't it's where the washout is, right there past right. the house. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah, okay. Very good. I just, just yeah. All right. Very good. So the closure itself will only physically affect like two or three houses that are right there. Right. There's no Everybody else traffic. should be able to, yeah, oh, okay. else should be able to get around. Yeah. Oh, okay. Exactly. Those, you know. Since they got all the out of state, they're going to be flying up to the air. I wonder what the added time of the trip. Yeah, so I don't know if anybody else had any questions on the packet or trying to just give you some information about additional things. Good. Thank you. Well, it'll be the last Wednesday concert, so hope you all enjoy coming. Enjoy the concert on Wednesday night. It's going to be a great one. Yeah. Thank you, Ellie. Yeah. They've done a wonderful job, also. Yeah, I've enjoyed all the concerts. Oh, good. I'm glad you hear that. Happy meeting. Okay. So, um, anyway, so if you have any other questions about the packet, other than that. Uh, meeting minutes are on the 10th of August. Which apparently we're not in your packet, so thank you for someone who had call Kelly and she emailed them to you, I guess. Yep, yep. Any issues with those? Are we good to uh, no, we'll make a motion we accept them as written? Sure. Okay, all in favor? All right. All right. All right. <clears throat> and then we have the of committee meeting minutes in there. It's good to see SMS cleaned up. Yes, yep, yep. I thought, I have to say, uh, the DRB was terrific. They, I went to the original meeting, um, oh, and also to um, Scott Perkins, uh, younger, he, he was there, he was great. And then they actually met again and they went out and did a site visit, which was terrific, and updated some maps and 
uh, our map and went out and submitted that. So it's actually great. They, they did an amazing job and definitely all their, their due diligence. I drove by today and it does look good. So it was nice for them. It gave enforcement because it's easier. Also gave Scott something to follow so he knows it's all laid out for him in a neater package. So. Yeah, so um I mean structurally it's it's 
spine. Yeah. It but just, it's cosmetically yeah. it's and we yeah. gotta deal with the spalling. And I saw the hot and part of it is too, we gotta deal with the spalling on it. In order to do that, you need to hold the sandbag, the water, so that you can mm -hmm. it's got a huge price tag on it. So I said to Chris, maybe this Chris, Chris, that we should just buy a bunch of baby bridges and start we'll just start swapping them. Instead of from now on, instead of like going through this whole thing, we're just gonna yeah. Yeah. I said it was the original covered bridge that was there. Yeah. It was a covered bridge? Yes. Before my time, yeah. Oh really? Yeah. Oh, Bummer now because those are all historically there's special grants just for those and you know. And if I were a bridge, the small crack would last longer than any of these. Oh, no doubt. I leave that to be a true statement. Hmm. All right, anything else come before the board? Okay, I entertain a motion to enter executive session.